During the course of playing the game, there are going to be three screens you're going to get extremely familiar with. And the first we're going to talk about is the heads up display. All your basic gameplay information is right here. At the top left, we have the starting tutorial quests. You can do these in any order you want. You can even ignore them if you want, but they won't go away until you complete them. The bottom left, we have our character stats. Your health bar is actually a mixture of food and any damage you take in the game. And at this point in early access that I'm making this video, it's really difficult to take any damage. But if you fall from a high enough ledge, you're going to take damage. And you're going to see exactly what I'm saying. All this means basically is there's no health packs in the game. All you have to do is eat some food and you're going to refill your health bar. But because it's a mix of food and damage taken, that health bar will always be ticking down slowly. You'll be able to find a few food packets in the drop pod storage chest when you start out, but those aren't going to last you guys long, so you need to find more in various wrecks and chests scattered throughout the planet. Eventually, though, you're going to have to start growing your own food, but the food grower is only unlocked by advancing the oxygen stat seen in your terraforming screen. Water is our next stat, and it ticks faster than the food bar, so it's important to keep an eye on it. Luckily, there's enough ice lying around to keep your thirst quenched. Use your multi-tool to left-click on a piece of ice to pick it up. Then using your crafting station, craft yourself a water bottle. To drink, just right-click the water bottle in your inventory. Bottles of water and oxygen canisters fill each bar completely. And oxygen's our last stat, and it's simple. It runs out, you're dead. Depending on the game mode you selected when you started, one of a few things will happen. Either your items or save file will be, delete, will be deleted, or if you're playing a standard mode game, they'll just drop on the ground. You just need to go back to the spot where you died. There'll be a blue chest there. Just loot the blue chest. If you hit the Q button, you're going to open up your build menu, but you're going to need to craft a construction ship before you can. The quest steps actually prompt you to build one as seen here. Just build it using the crafting station in your drop pod and equip it to your gear bar by hitting the tab button to open up your inventory. When you start out, you have one row for gear and a very limited inventory, but that's fine because later on in the game, these both can be upgraded for more. First two items we'll be creating is the tier one backpack, which adds an additional four slots to our inventory. Each tier that we upgrade our backpack adds an additional four slots. So at tier two, it'll add eight instead of four. You get the point. Then we're going to be crafting O2 tanks. These tanks increase our oxygen bar from 100 to 145. It's important, guys, not to mistakenly confuse the O2 canisters or O2 tanks. The O2 canisters is a consumable that completely refills your O2 bar. When crafting, to check the resources that you're going to need to craft that item, just click the crafting workbench and highlight over the item. The required resources show up right here. Once you have both the backpack and the O2 tanks, make sure you equip them to your gear slots by left-clicking on each in your inventory. The next item we're going to be crafting on the list is a construction ship. Now, we need this equipped to the gear slot to be able to not just pull up the craftable blueprints like structures, but to build them as well. So we can't build a base unless this is built and equipped to our gear slot. And as tempting as it may be to start building a base, we're not going to be building it here because believe it or not, in standard mode, you start at the bottom of a lake bed. Later on, as you terraform this planet, this whole area is going to be underwater. You don't want to build here. Instead, look for this formation of rocks and head there. Just make sure you have enough resources in your inventory to build a quick base. So for this, you'll need three pieces of iron, two pieces of titanium, and one silicone. That's going to be enough to give you one room and a door. This will give you a quick pop-up base to refill your oxygen when it runs low. And it's a really good idea, guys, to have these resources whenever you explore too far away from your base. It's just too easy to get carried away and you don't want to die. Building and crafting, just like many open world survival games, is a major part of gameplay. Planet Crafter is actually no different. In fact, the game actually centers around the whole crafting system as a whole. Starting out, your available blueprints to craft are, needless to say, limited and disappointing. So if you want that top-level gear, base building pieces, and things like that, then you have two ways to do it. First, you can unlock additional blueprints by simply terraforming the planet. Doing this unlocks specific blueprints at key intervals in the terraforming process. You can track your progress and map out what comes next by building a blueprint screen. And some blueprints can only be unlocked by finding coded microchips in the world. Things like chests, shipwrecks, and hidden rooms are everywhere hiding resources, chips, and even gear that you might not even be able to craft yet. So get out there and explore. But what do you do once you got a coded microchip? Well, you can decode it at a blueprint screen. Just have it in your inventory and click the decode button at the bottom. 
To start your first base, you want to pick a spot that's in a good central location. Most players pick this area here, and honestly, they're right. It's a really good spot to start. It has relatively flat ground, and we have some wrecks to explore just in front right here. There's one behind us on the side of the lake bed here. There's higher quality crafting resources like an iridium mine right here, which is marked by the falling sand. There's aluminum right over here, which actually has a wreck inside to explore, by the way. Super alloy right here, which also has a wreck inside. Tons of basic resources all around us. This is a good area to start your first base. The base building system in this game, well, it uses a modular system. So you won't get that foundation and walls to build your base. You will get sections of base that will snap together to make bigger buildings. Just look for the link icon here to make sure they're linked. And if you mess up, hey, that's no problem. Just craft a deconstruction chip at your crafting bench. Whip it to your gear slot and then using your mouse wheel, you can select the deconstruction mode and delete the segment you messed up. And you even get your resources back, all of them which is a good thing because resources don't respawn in this game. To start out with, the only power we're going to be able to build is a wind turbine. This is only going to cost us one iron, so it's really cheap to build. It doesn't matter where we put this down because power sources in Planet Crafter are global and they affect any structure anywhere on the planet, any structure that you've built. It's important to note here, though, that inside your buildable blueprint screen, you need to check the power outage for each source of energy, like the wind turbine, and you can find this information right here. It's also equally important to check the energy needs for buildable equipment like drills, and you may need to build more sources of power. You can find that information as well in the same spot. If your power usage exceeds the power you create from things like solar panels and wind turbines, your power will go out. If your power goes out, things like terraforming equipment will stop working until you build more sources of power, like more wind turbines, solar, whatever you're using for power. However, the oxygen in your base and your crafting station will still work. You won't die from the power going out, but it is a pain. Now our final steps are to build a drill to start creating pressure in the atmosphere, eventually get a blue sky. We're also going to need to produce oxygen. The veggie tube will grow plants that will produce oxygen for the planet. You'll start out with a basic seed that you can find inside your storage chest and your drop pot. Each tier of veggie tube will produce up to so much O2 per second. As you'd guess, higher tier veggie tubes will produce more oxygen. Some seeds will even have modifiers that you can find through exploring. This will increase the yield of oxygen. Placing plants with the highest modifiers and the highest veggie tube you can make will give you the most bang for your buck. You can check how much each veggie tube produces by checking the stats in your blueprint screen right here. Lastly, we need to heat the planet. Not only does this increase our terraforming goals, it also will melt ice that's blocking cave systems, revealing new areas to explore. To do this, we're going to need to find iridium. Now, iridium can be found in several cave systems and also by breaking down heaters that you discover while exploring wrecks. For this, we'll be using the iridium mine, which can be found by looking for the falling sand right here. Make sure you have enough items for a pop-up base and head there. Once you're inside, drop your base and look for the glowing red crystals. This is the iridium you're looking for. If you've already been playing Planet Crafter and you have your own tips and tricks or anything else that may help newer players, then leave those down in the comments. Let's do this together, guys. 